Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the 72 pin cartridge connector on your Nintendo Entertainment System. So if you plug a game into your system and you get either a screen with a solid color, or a screen with a bunch of flashing colors, or the game just looks corrupt and is not playing correctly, then the two likely issues are either going to be a dirty cartridge connector or your 72 pin connector on the console itself. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a couple different ways of fixing those issues. I'm going to be showing you how to replace the 72 pin connector entirely. I'm also going to show you how to clean the current one that you have. And I'm also going to show you how to clean all of the game cartridges that you have using isopropyl alcohol. All of these steps will ensure that your games have a better connection when in the system and have a higher chance of being read correctly. So to start off, you're just going to want to turn your system upside down just like this. And then if you look on the back, there's going to be six different slots for screws. These will accept just a standard Phillips screwdriver, so just get a normal size Phillips one and then go ahead and take these six screws out. And yeah, I just put all of mine in this little container right here in this first slot. So I'm just going to keep those in here, and now you can actually just pull off the top of the console. So I'll just flip it over, and then this top actually just comes right off. And it looks like I actually forgot that I had a game in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this one out real quick. Alright, it just got the game out, and it looks like my system is all ready to begin. So then once you get inside your system, there's going to be a few more screws that we have to remove. And that's going to be these ones right here. And then one up here, and then one over here, and then one down here, and one right here. Depending on what model you have and how many screws are actually left, it might be a little bit different. For example, I've seen videos online where people do not have a couple of the screws that I've had and I have like one or two extra that some people don't have. So there is a little bit of variation with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these ones removed and I'll just put these in the second slot right here just next to those uh, case screws for the outside of it. Alright, so I just removed all the screws and then this metal plate should be able to just come right off after that. On this side you might have to move it around a little bit, but it should be pretty easy to come off. And then this is what we've got left right here. And now this is the cartridge mechanism that actually loads the games in. As you can see it goes up and down and stuff. And yeah, there's actually only six screws holding this in. So if you take a look, the two ones in the middle are a little bit different than the four on the outer side. I'll show you what I mean later when I sort them, but just go ahead and take all six of these screws off and just make sure to put the two ones kind of in the middle off to the side. Alright, so I've got those four out, now I've just got to finish these two off and I'm just going to set these ones separately aside from those ones. Alright, so I've just completed removing the screws. I've got the two separate ones right here, and I've got those other four right here. And now we've actually just got to kind of slide the disc tray out. So this should come out pretty easy. If you pull it forward, there might be a little bit of resistance, but you just got to kind of slant it up a little bit, and you really should not have to force it out that hard. It should come out uh, relatively easy. And then yeah, this is just the tray mechanism for the cartridges, so we can just set this one aside. And then what we're left with is actually just the motherboard and the 72 pin connector. So like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace it with a brand new 72 pin connector. And I'm also going to have it linked in the video description as well. And I'll be showing you just how to clean it if you don't quite want to buy a new one just yet. So for me, I've already tried cleaning mine and I still can't get my games to read correctly all the time. There's still quite a bit of finessing and stuff I have to do just to get them to read. So I'm going to be replacing the whole thing entirely. But just for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to clean yours. So to clean your system, you're just going to need some isopropyl alcohol. 90% is best, but I've just got the 70% right here, so I'm just going to be using this. But if you've got 90%, then that would probably be better for this job. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this alcohol onto the end of the Q-tip right here. And yeah, you can't even really see it that much. And yeah, then pretty much you just want to go in there just like this with the connector. And just kind of clean it in there just like this. Because this part that we're cleaning is where the games actually plug into, so you want to make sure you get as much dirt and stuff off of there as you can. 
And if you get any uh, black or brown or anything out of the Q-tip, then you know that you're getting something out of it. So I'm not really getting anything. I'm just going to switch to the other end of this Q-tip and just uh, dry it off now. So yeah, you just want to go in there and make sure you do a good job, because the more stuff that you get out, the higher chance the games have of being red. But like I said, I already tested that and that doesn't work for mine, so we're at the stage where we know we have to completely replace the whole 72 pin connector. So as you can see, the motherboard is actually just slightly loose, but we're going to need a little bit more leeway to actually be able to remove the 72 pin connector from it. So there's going to be a few screws on this side of the motherboard, and you're just going to have to remove the number that would be able to allow you to actually lift it up. For me, it looks like there's about two or three of them, so I'm just going to go in here and just test it out real quick. Alright, so I just went ahead and removed three screws, and the motherboard is actually completely loose now, which is good, because that gives us a lot of space to be able to work with it and move it around. So yeah, there's going to be like two parts to the motherboard. This bottom part is like the frame, and then the top of it is like the actual motherboard itself. So I'm just going to turn this around, and you can see we already did remove the two screws on this. So this is the part where you can kind of just slide out the 72 pin connector, but you do want to be gentle with it at this part. You want to just make sure that you slide it straight out, don't be too forceful with it, and it should come out pretty easily. So yeah, I just kind of shimmied it off of there and it just popped off at the end. And yeah, this is what the old 72 pin connector looks like. So yeah, it looks like there's a few bent pins on this one and it looks like there's also just stuff stuck inside of it that I can't possibly get out. So this thing is no good to me anymore. I just was gonna replace it with this brand new one that I've got in the bag right here. So if anyone is looking for a 72 pin connector, I'm going to have one linked in the video description. This one's going to have reinforced metal too, so it's going to be a little bit stronger than the factory one, and it may even last a little bit longer than the factory one too. And hopefully this should fix all the issues that I'm having with reading games. So yeah, I'm just going to remove this from the bag and uh, let's get started with installing it. But before we even proceed on to the installation itself, I just want to make sure that these connectors on the motherboard are completely clean. So I'm just going to be taking some more isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, and I'm just going to go along the top and the bottom of it real quick, just to make sure that there's no dirt or anything on it. Even though this is the inside of the system, there could still be a little bit of dirt or something that would leak in there occasionally. But yeah, we're just doing this just so we have the best chance of everything working out in the end. And yeah, as you can see, I'm actually getting quite a bit of uh, dirt and stuff off of this on the end of that Q-tip. So I'm just going to do another pass just to make sure I got most of this stuff off. And yeah, this is completely black too, so I'm just going to actually take my last Q-tip and just finish it off and go along it again, just to make sure it's as clean as I can get it right now. So yeah, it looks like we finally got most of the dirt off and stuff. So now it's actually time to install this thing. So now we're going to take the new 72 pin connector, and as you can see this one's got the holes in it. So this one is the bottom right here, and this is the top. So you want to have this part of it above the motherboard, and then as you can see there's kind of like some little teeth in here, and the motherboard actually just kind of sticks right in between there. And then those holes will line up directly on top of the motherboard. So if you buy the one from the link in the video description, then this one's actually going to have stronger metal, so it might be a little bit tougher to get on. I'm actually just going to do this a little bit off camera just to make sure I don't mess it up. So pretty much just some general guidelines that you want to follow. You want to make sure that all the pins are straight. You want to make sure that the connectors on the motherboards, each corresponding pin is touching the corresponding one on the connector. So you pretty much just want to go in straight. You don't want to go in at an angle or anything like that. And you just want to be gentle but firm with it at the same time. So let me actually just give this a couple minutes and uh, try it out. Alright, so I believe I got it on there. That only took about like 15 seconds or so. From what I was reading online, it seems like it took people a little bit longer than that, but that was uh, a lot easier than I expected it to be. And it appears I've got all the holes lined up too. I've got them lined up on that side, and I've got them on this side. As you can see, the light was passing through a little bit there. And then like I said, I made sure it was touching all the pins. I just went in there straight, not at like an angle or anything like that. So yeah, once you've got this on there, it's pretty much just time to start putting the console back together. 
So my motherboard is actually a little bit out like that. So let me just uh, do this off camera real quick and then I'll just get it all flat and then we can uh, proceed with putting back the console. All right, so I've got the motherboard all flat again and I'm gonna start off with putting back together the system by putting these three screws in that I took off from this side of it over here. So I'm pretty sure I took one out from right here and let me just put that back in. And I think the last one was down here or something like that. You know, for your own system, you should probably make sure that you keep track of where which holes these screws are coming from. But for me, I didn't really do that. I'm just going to watch this video back in the end and figure it out. All right, so I've just replaced all three screws. I'm not sure if I got them in the exact original spots, but I'll just go back and look at this video and just make sure about it. But yeah, now we've got the motherboard back in place, we've got the three screws on this side, and later we're going to have the heat shield that's going to come in and put the screws in on that side and make it completely stable. But yeah, the next step we're going to be putting in is the disc tray again. So this should go in pretty much the same way that it came out, you just got to be gentle with it, just kind of get in there a little bit, get it started. And you just kind of want to get the corners of the little plastic tray above the tabs. Alright, so I've got the disc tray back in there now, and it is definitely easier to slide it in when it's in the down position. But yeah, you just want to be gentle with it, you don't want to shove it in there or anything like that. So yeah, next we're going to be putting in the screws. If you remember, there was like two screws that go in the middle, and then four screws that go all the way in the corners of the disc tray. Alright, so I just replaced all six screws, and the disc tray is looking good right now. And then after you do this step, you want to use your disc tray a few times and make sure it still works, make sure it's not too tight, because if you over tighten the two screws in the front, then the disc tray might have trouble going up or down, and if that happens, then you just want to loosen them about half a turn before like they would start seeming like really tight on the motherboard, and then you want to just test it again, and then that should ensure that the tray will have no issues. So yeah, then the next step we're going to be doing is the heat shield. So you just want to take it and we just set it on there, and we're going to just be screwing it in just how it was before. Alright, so I just got all the screws installed onto the heat shield. And now everything inside of the system is pretty much completely done. The disc tray still works. The 72 pin connector has been replaced. So now we pretty much just have to take the top shell of the console and just put it back on. And then we can just turn it upside down again. And then we've just got those final six screws to put back in. So I'll just put those in and I'll get back to you in a minute. So I've got all those screws installed now and my NES is completely ready to go now. So the disc tray still works as you can see. And now that our console's been completely cleaned and we've got the 72 pin connector replaced, I'm going to show you how to clean all of your games using isopropyl alcohol as well. And then this way, when you clean the games, it'll make sure that there's no dirt or anything transferred from the old games onto the new 72 pin connector. It's important to do this with almost all of your games because you want to make sure that you're not getting any of that 40 year old gunk and grime on the bottom of your old cartridge transferred onto your brand new 72 pin connector that you just installed. So before you know it, you're going to start having the same problems again in no time. So the way that you're going to clean the game is pretty similar to how we clean the pins on the NES motherboard. So what you're going to do is take some isopropyl alcohol, 90% plus is best, same with the system, but I'm using 70% just for this video, and apply a little bit of pressure as you're doing it. And then once you're done with that, then you can just take the dry side and go over it and just make sure that you're finishing up and drying it off while you're getting all the rest of the dirt off of it as well. So then yeah, you're just going to get it a little bit wet, just like this. And then just go in here, and as you can see there's the chip, so you want to go above it and uh, below it. And then you just want to go in here just like this, apply a good amount of pressure, not a crazy amount, but a good amount in there to get a lot of uh, the dirt and stuff off. And also make sure to rotate the Q-tip as you're going around it. And you want to go on the bottom underneath too, just like this. And then yeah, I actually already cleaned this game, I cleaned all my games, so once you're done with that, you just want to take the dry end and just go around it like this. And then you just want to do a quick little inspection, make sure there's no dust or any strains from the uh, Q-tip left on there. If there is, you can either just lightly blow them off or get your finger, go along it real gently. And at this point, your game should be uh, pretty much completely clean. So yeah, you want to do this with all your games. You want to make sure there's no contamination being transferred between your NES and any of its games. Because if you leave some of the games unclean, then 
that's going to get into the system eventually and back onto the games that you just cleaned. And then every time you use these games, you'll have a much higher chance of them actually reading correctly from the system. So yeah, I'll meet you on my NES console now and let's go test some of these games out. So as you can see, I've got some games loading up onto the NES right now, and it looks like there's no issues with them anymore. My console used to have a lot of issues reading these games. It would either be giving me uh, glitched out graphics, or flashing colors, or sometimes just a solid one color. But it looks like this is fixing it and improving the success rate by quite a bit. So yeah, now that I've got all my games cleaned and I've got a new 72 pin connector, I should be having a lot more fun with my system now. I think it's going to be reading the games a lot better. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.